Venezuela. Yeah. 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 Mr. President, uh, under the United Nations precedent, can we not infer that the United States will not be expelled from, no. United, from the United Nations based on the previous case? I'm not sure what exactly point of procedure you are rising on. If you wish to make that in the debate, please do. Okay. <laughs> now this resolution and its mover may come to no surprise to the collective people of this assembly. But after having spoken to Senor Primo Chavez, I have been fully convinced <laughs> to undertake such a humanitarian objective. Since before the first Gulf War, the United States has used depleted uranium to tip their munitions. To this day, the practice by the evil nation is still supported. <laughs> a study of the bullet holes made by the DU tip bullets in the 90s showed that the holes were up to 1,000 times more radioactive than the surrounding background radioactivity. So it is to no surprise that the regions like southern Iraq have seen a seven to 10 fold increase in birth defects and leukemia. Weapons may not be undoubly or undoubly inhumane. Weapons may not have undoubly negative effects on the natural environment. Weapons can only be used for the duration of an armed conflict. A weapon that is used or continues to act after the war is over violates, violates this criteria. These are some rules accepted by the UN as fair war practice. Now, the Pentagon has on record admitted that at least 320 tons of depleted uranium has been left on battlefields around the world. However, it is probably closer to around 1,000 tons. The bullets shatter after penetration. Fragments end up in the air, in the water, and in the soil, still radioactive. The use of such a chemical not only ruins the environment and the people of the nation, but it even affects their own soldiers. A case study of Gulf War veterans showed that over 6% of the million some veterans that served returned and reported ailments that are known as the Gulf War Syndrome. A case study of 23 Gulf War soldiers that complained about these Gulf War Syndrome ailments <coughs> found that they had depleted uranium in their lungs and urine. And to this day, they continue to use such weapons. And lest we forget the atrocities that were committed in the name of war during the 1960s in Vietnam. The use of chemicals like Asian Orange, which was tested on US soil. Or the fact that they are the only nation on the planet to have ever used an atomic bomb against citizens. Twice. <laughs> America today wages war, and they came to the UN for approval, and they did not receive it. Even their Congress did not approve such an endeavor, and they, they say they work for freedom? Quite the fallacy, I say. A war that they should not have ever gotten involved in. A war that has no end. They are involved in the second Vietnam, and it is sucking the wealth out of neighboring countries as well as, as their own. The ploy of their unarmed POWs, captured by Americans and flown out to an island clear across the planet forced into cold water, beaten, bruised, and battered. The previous administration knowingly allowed this to happen, all the while keeping their own citizens in the dark, all the while hiding the evils from the world. Recently, the records have been released to the public. Their use of harsh interrogations was unethical and clearly against the UN statutes on torture. Let us also touch base on their use of rendition, torture by proxy which also violates the UN's world laws on torture lying, along with infringing the nation's citizens' sovereignty. How can a country that treats foreign citizens so terribly be allowed into such an organization that supports and strives for peace? How can a country that treats its own veterans with such evil be allowed in an assembly that strives for the betterment of the entire world? The United States is a threat to the security of the neighboring nations. It is a threat to the security of the world. It is a threat to the security of their own citizens. We demand that such a nation not sit on an organization that strives for peace, especially next to us. <laughs> che Guevara had a dream, a dream that the poor were fed, that the children were educated. 
He had a dream that the manifestation of evil was no more. He had a dream that people were free, and in this dream there's no room for the United States. Please help make us our or help make our dream become a reality. Thank you.